Hi guys, today I'm here with my first reading wrap up of 2019 and in January I read four books. Originally I intended to read more and I really wanted to read loads and loads of books to feel a great sense of achievement, that's what I like doing in January, but I hit a reading slump in the middle of the month and I started loads and loads of books and then would get a half or sometimes even three quarters of the way through them and just wouldn't finish them. So so that's my goal for February but today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in January. I started off the year by reading The Wild Remedy by Emma Mitchell and this was amazing. It was such a good choice for my first book of the year because I like to read something at the start of the year that I know I'm going to love. This is a non-fiction nature writing book about Emma who has had depression for the last 25 years and each chapter follows a different month out of the year and she's talking about what kind of nature is around at that time, what kind of birds and flowers and trees and the things that she sees in nature during that month and I really love the structure of it. I thought it was structured really nicely so that you can read it all in one go or you might like to read it and follow along her year as our year progresses. One of the things I really liked about this book is how it mixes scientific fact with personal anecdotes because there's lots of things that I have noticed in my own life to do with my mental health and nature, but it was really nice to see the same things that Emma goes through backed up by science too. I've been following her on Twitter and Instagram for a while. She is Silver Pebble 2 on Instagram, and I love seeing her flat lays and the things that she has collected, and you really do get a sense of this in this book too, because included are illustrations that Emma has done, and also pictures that she has taken when she has been out and about, and as she was writing this book. Something that really helps me when my mental health isn't so good, especially during the winter, is spending as much time as as possible outside and so this was a really great glimpse into somebody else who feels exactly the same way as I do and so I felt really understood when I read this book and I've read similar books to The Wild Remedy before but nothing that was as detailed and as precise as The Wild Remedy but I think that if you have read books like Amy Liptrot's The Outrun or even other nature writing books like those by Robert McFarlane then you will really love The Wild Remedy and it's also so a great book if you like reading about mental health too. The second book I read during January was Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons, which is one of the books that I featured in my classics I want to read in 2019 video. It's the one that I knew I would start the year off with because I've been excited to read it for a while and have been eyeing it up as one of my first classics of the year and I was not disappointed. This was such a laugh. I found myself really loving the characters because they really are are caricatures of each other because what Cold Comfort Farm does and what Stella Gibbons is so good at is parodying a genre that was very popular at the time that Cold Comfort Farm was written. These books aren't as popular now so you may not have heard of the authors that she was parodying but if you take authors like Thomas Hardy or D.H. Lawrence and look at the nature aspects and kind of the farming aspects of their book that is what Stella Gibbons is parodying in Cold Comfort farm because it follows a young orphan girl called Flora Post but unlike lots of orphans in literature Flora really isn't bothered about the fact that she is an orphan and it is definitely something that is pushed to the side once you get past the first chapter. Really she is orphaned because it serves as a great way into her having to live with her relatives at Cold Comfort Farm. Flora is a very particular character who knows how she likes things whereas her relatives, the Starcadders, really are unlike anybody I have ever met and I'm sure that are unlike lots of people you have met too. For example there is the character of Aunt Ada Doom who is a recluse. She never comes out of her bedroom and the only thing that she'll talk about is how she once saw something in the coal shed. You also get characters like Elphine who is a child of nature and who doesn't like to be indoors. There's also Judith who is Flora's aunt who is obsessed with her son Seth and Seth who is this brute of a man who goes around all the women but is also really obsessed with films and is just 
a very strange character. They are all very strange characters, but that's what makes this book so hilarious. I think if you're not a lover of classics, you still would really love this book because there's a lot in it that is universal and a lot in it that I found not warm and touching, like I almost expected, but a lot that could be warm and touching if it wasn't Cold Comfort Farm because everything in Cold Comfort Farm is taken to the extreme. She really pushes the limits of characterization and makes you think about these characters in a way that you wouldn't expect but I think that the writing style is very accessible and I found as I was reading it that I could picture the scenes so perfectly as if they were playing out in front of me rather than me just reading the pages. So I loved Cold Comfort Farm and I'm hoping to read more Stella Gibbons this year because I just found her really funny and I really like reading books like this. I spoke in my life and writing update about how January wasn't the best month mentally for me. I really struggled with my mental health during January and things are on the up for now. But one of the books that I decided to read was the ultimate comfort book for me. It's one of my favourite childhood books and one that I don't think I have spoken about on booktube before and I don't think that anybody has spoken about on booktube before but it's one of my favourite books and it is The Fairy Caravan by Beatrix Potter. You may know Beatrix Potter because she wrote The Tales of Peter Rabbit, she wrote so many famous children's stories but The Fairy Caravan is a much longer book from from her and is still for children but for older children and follows a group of characters and they are animals who have formed a travelling circus. You have this overarching story of the travelling circus but within the book you also have individual stories that are mainly set in the Lake District where Beatrix Potter lived and use a lot of local dialect which I really loved. I read this book for the first time when I was about nine, maybe ten and I fell in love with it immediately and it was one of the first books where I really got a strong connection to it. I would write my own stories based on the stories in here and I just loved everything about it and so when I go back to it it brings back those same feelings of comfort and love that I felt when I read this for the first time. And then the final book that I read in January was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I did not intend to read this book but I picked it up by chance read the first page and then read the rest of it in the same evening because I was so hooked on it once I'd started. I had such a strong reaction to this book though. On one hand I really hated it and on the other hand I really really loved it and I think that it is because of the characters in this book who really aren't nice people at all. They're not the kind of people that I would be friends with, they're not the kind of people who I would really want to associate with but they are so fascinating to read about and I love books like this who make you question what you think about people and how book characters can be written, whether you should be able to sympathise with them or whether it's okay to dislike them. Conversations with Friends is set in Ireland and it's told from the perspective perspective of Frances who is 21 years old and she has always been best friends with this girl called Bobby. They also went out with each other at one point but they aren't at the start of the book and it's about Frances and Bobby meeting a couple called Melissa and Nick and the way that they all kind of become obsessed with each other and their lives revolve around each other and Frances starts an affair with Nick who is much older than her and they have a very complicated relationship with each other and you see them go back and forth with each other throughout the book. I found that their relationship was why I was turning the pages so quickly, not because I was rooting for them but just because their relationship was so up and down that you weren't really sure what was going to happen next. This has been compared to The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger a lot and I think one review even called it The Catcher in the Rye for the Snapchat generation and I think that that comparison has been drawn because of the very specific piercing way that Sally Rooney talks about human emotions and feelings and our relationships with each other, whether that is friendship or a romantic relationship or something in between. I found that Frances' voice was very much like Holden Caulfield's voice in the fact that she is quite guarded at first but then you do get to see glimpses of who she actually is and who she wants to be and you're not really quite sure of her motivation or where the story is going. And there has been lots of hype surrounding it. I don't think everybody's going to love it but I do think it's a book that you should at least try to read because you will get a lot out of it. I'm looking forward to reading normal 
normal people, which is her latest book now. So that was my January reading wrap up. I'd love to know in the comments what you read during January, what was your favourite book and have you read any of the books that I read in January? So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!